Hey you there. This video is part of the first year of PhD work of Nicolas Riveras at the University of Tübingen, and I want to tell you a little bit about how soil formation and soil erosion is driven by microorganisms, biocrusts and vegetation. When we say soil, we speak about the thin layer of the Earth's surface where atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere and biosphere interact. Nowadays, one of the main problems threatening the functionality of the soil is the erosion. Erosion is a gradual and dynamic geomorphological process, that act continuously over the terrestrial relief against tectonic upleaf, flattening the surface to a more stable condition. Erosion is defined as the process of detachment and transport of soil particles on the surface. That can be carried out by wind, water or gravity. At global scale, in year 2012, around of 7.5 million square kilometer of the soil's present high level of erosion. Specially concentrated at less developed countries in South America, Africa, and Asia. And mainly by effect of water. When it starts raining, the drops that hit the ground, apply an enormous pressure, equivalent to 10 atmospheres, although only for a few microseconds. As you might expect, it has a devastator effect, destroying soil aggregates, and throwing sediment up to a meter high. Then, the fine material remaining due to the surface destruction seal the soil surface, increasing surface runoff and dragging the detached particles down the slope. Nevertheless, the soil is not alone in this battle. It has a great ally, biota. Biota, in its different forms, besides to prevent the direct impact of the drop on the soil acting as a physical barrier when coverage is enough, gives flexibility and cohesion to the soil aggregates through the structuration. This process starts in undeveloped soils, where the water and nutrient availability is very scarce, but enough to sustain the life of some microbial communities, they usually use associations with different types of microorganisms and in some occasions with several photosynthetic species, forming the so-called biological soil crust or biocrust. Those organisms in their life cycle liberate different organic compounds binding soil mineral particles, and improve the conditions for more demanding species, such as plants. Now, most studies to determine how this effect develops, are done in laboratory, often with microorganisms selected based on previous studies and with a limited cultivation time. In this sense, Chile gives a unique opportunity, which makes it the most suitable place for this kind of experiments, where we, as scientists, try to keep as many variables constant, and modify those of research interest. In this study we will use soils with a common parent material, but developed in different climatic conditions and therefore different ecosystems in each, and we will study its behavior against rain. For this purpose, we will collect undisturbed soil monoliths in four national parks distributed along 1,500 kilometers of the coastal range in Chile, covering four different climatic conditions, and including soils with and without biocrust. Then we will apply a precipitation of 45 mm per hour for half an hour, from a height of 4 meters, locating the samples under this simulator with a slope of 10% to avoid ponding, and then, we will collect the surface runoff and the percolated water of the sample. Finally, we will analyze how carbon is moved by the action of erosion and how soil aggregates are destabilized. So, what about the results? Well, this is quite complicated by the moment, part of those experiments were already done, but due to the coronavirus crisis only half of the samples could be collected, and the laboratory analyzes cannot be started yet. And for now. There is a lot of work left, and many questions to answer. That is what I have to show you by the moment, I hope you enjoyed the video and invite you to share your comments. Thank you very much.